Mark, you're making beef olives with metal. <laughs> well, you certainly are. So, do you, know, do you know what a beef olive is? Well, I know what a beef olive was. Mum used to make them when I was a kid, and I hated them. So, I'm curious <laughs> to see how this goes today, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what knurdle is, though. Right, so knurdle is uh, basically... Oh, it's, so it's got a K in it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's German, so you've got to pronounce it knurdle <laughs> with an accent. <laughs> um, but basically, it's a dumpling. So we're making a dumpling, and this is a great um, way to use up all your stale bread, you know? So you want a day-old bread, so it's all stale, and then we put butter in it, we saute some onions off, season it up, mm -hmm. make it into a dumpling, and then poach them, and they go, they're, they're great. Okay, so the olives, just quickly, um, they're, they're some sort of rolled up thing, aren't they? Yeah, so we've got some beef here, we're going to do some thin slices, we're going to roll it out, and then we're going to stuff it with some onions, some bacon, a bit of mustard in there, some pickles, make this beautiful sauce around it, braise them, thicken the sauce, Serve it with a knurdle and jobs jobs are good and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Every time. I can't wait. It sounds delicious. We're making something that sounds like the Swedish chef would have said, <laughs> knurdle and beef olives. <laughs> what are we, we gonna start with? We certainly are. Right, so we've got some beef. So this is the eye round. Yep. So cheaper piece of meat. But what we're doing, we're taking a nice slice of that and we're just rolling it out with a rolling pin or, you know, like a, a mallet. You can just crush it down. You just want it, you want it nice and thin and sort of spread out, right? Rumour has it you may have already put some on the floor, but who am I? <laughs> Tell tales. I don't know why you saw that. <laughs> okay, so we've got the mustard. <laughs> right, yeah, and then we've got some mustard here. So a little bit of mustard goes on. So we're just building up all the flavours. Yep. You know, it's a good idea as well. Um, you know, I mean, you can do this yourself. It's great. It's great fun. You know, always buy a bit of extra meat because it does end up on the floor. <laughs> um, all buy it already sliced. Okay. Which is probably what I would do, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's just okay. a, it's a lot easier. <laughs> right, so mustard goes on. A little bit of bacon. So just some smoked bacon. Pop yep. that into there. Smoked uh, you know, for flavour? Is that pr yeah. pretty much where you've gone that way? Yeah, smoked yep. for flavour. And, and so we're going to roll them up and we're going to cook it all together. And then basically it's all going to cook and, and flavour and, and all the flavours are going to permeate through the meat. You know, the smoked bacon. We've got some pickles in there as well. Nice. Love you know, so we, uh, yeah, and it's always a good idea, you know, don't try and put too much on there. Right, you'll got... end up like me when I'm trying to make dumplings, they <laughs> spew all over the place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so the onions here, uh, you're just chopping them, are you? To... Yeah, just going to do some slices of onion, so they just go in there. Right. So everything's raw. I've got a pan on here which is just warming up, and we're going to seal these off in a sec. Ooh. Right, and again, and pickles. we know, I talk about smells all the time, and the smells are really wafting, so I'm, I'm pretty happy about this. Yeah, and, and it's one of these things that, you know, you, you build them all up, you seal it all off, you make your sauce, and then you just cook it, you know, and just leave it for a couple of hours, just cooking, ticking over nice yeah. and slow, and then you just get this amazing flavour in the sauce, which will thicken. Is this a family recipe for you? Yeah, this is a family recipe. So I always have this every time I go over to Germany, and it's, it's one of my, uh, my favourite dishes. That's why I'm making it on the show for you guys. Fantastic. Well, here's hoping that your family recipe was better than my family recipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you didn't like this, no, did I you? No, I didn't. But this is already looking a lot better. Sorry, Mum. So, so, <laughs> so what was different with yours? I don't know. Maybe I was just a fussy seven-year-old who decided <laughs> I just didn't want rolled up meat with bits in it. I don't know. So we've, we've given it a little bit of um, salt and pepper. Yep. And a good idea now, if you've got wooden skewers or toothpicks, you know, you can just secure them in place. Or what we used to do uh, back in Germany is get some cotton and tie it around. And that just holds it all into shape. OK, these are looking really good. And then what we do, we're just going to seal it off. Yep. So it's nice and brown on all sides. And then I'm going to show you how to make the sauce when we come back. Excellent. Hey, how quickly, how long do we want to put these in before they're done? Oh, literally about 30 seconds. Right. Just nice hot pan. Yep. You can already see it's getting a nice bit of colour. Yep. Nice bit of colour all over and then you're good to go. Fantastic. Oh, it's smelling great. I've changed the tune already. Quick question. We were talking about this. I think part of the reason I didn't like it is New Zealand, we had such an obsession with cooking the life <laughs> out of food. And these look rich and sort of gorgeous, not grey and sort of lifeless. Well, no, yeah, it's always a good idea. Get a bit of colour in there, helps with the flavour, you know, seals the meat. So, qu really quickly in a hot pan, yep. nice bit of colour all over. You can see I've put some cocktail sticks in it now that just yep. holds it. And then just some beef stock. And this, does this help the Pop onion cook? Because I was just wondering, is, are we going to end up with raw yeah, onion in the Yeah, so it's, so it's quite a tough piece of meat, yep. you know, so you either need to fla uh, flash fry it or cook it slow and for a long time. And that's what we're going to do here, slow for a long time. 
So I'll bring the stock up, turn it down, we'll pop a lid on mm. there for about an hour, hour and a half, and it will literally just be falling apart. Great. Now to the knurdle. Right, so I've already got some onions in here, just sort of uh, sweating down in some butter, or lots of butter. That's what we but love. I'm sure they're happy too. I would be if I was sweating down in butter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, a little bit of margarine goes in there. Right, day old bread. So yep. stale bread. So oh, if you, that looks like it's about a week old, but it's, that's okay. Well, no, no. The, the, the older, the better, as long as it's just not mouldy. Yep. Always check for that. It's definitely not mouldy. So, so that goes in there. And then, so I chop it up, and then I've got some milk. So I'm going to put some milk in. Cool. Okay, so give it a good splash. And then you want to just let that milk, um, you know, soak up. So the bread's really dry, so you can see it's just going to soak it all up here and get soft. And this is going to be the base of the knurdle. Okay, so this is going to hold everything together. Great. So we've got the bread there, the onions are doing their thing, sweating yep. away, having a lovely time in the butter, and then... That's it, and then the onions go in here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You know, and, and all that butter as well, it's going to get soaked up by the oh, bread. Oh, yeah, you're preaching to the choir, I yeah, can see I know, it. yeah. <laughs> see, so obviously at home you need a little bit more time, you know, just let give, give the bread time to soak everything up. Yep. Good bit of salt and pepper. Good. So Just season it, you know. It's only a bit of bread at the moment, so you do need to get some flavour into that. You know, I mean, you can put anything you want in here, you know. You can put mustard in here, you can put different herbs in there, you so know, So what are you using? A bit, bit of parsley yeah, going in gonna there? it's going to go a little, little bit of parsley through it, you know, if you've got it around. Chop that up. And some nutmeg as well. So a little bit of a fresh nutmeg. So, because I associate that with sweet, so that's, it's a savoury thing as well? It's it also was. on the floor. <laughs> You only need a little though. bit of nutmeg. You another one, because that, quite frankly, <laughs> no. that's, that's No, but that's, that's plenty of nutmeg in there, you know. <laughs> it's a very strong uh, spice. No, and it is... <laughs> no, it's a sweet spice. Yeah. Um, but it is great in savoury cooking as well. OK, so what do we have to do with this knurdle in order to make it eatable? Right, so, we're, so if you give it a little bit more time and it soaks up, and then what you can do is just get your hands in there, sort of mash it around, yep. and it doesn't want to be dripping wet, OK? It wants to be sort of pliable and then you can get it and then you're shaping yep. it in your hands so we don't want and to completely then, sort of annihilate no you don't it. you don't like, want a soggy mess no but it needs to be soft enough to you know absorb all those flavors and then in some uh, simmering water over here lightly yep. salted you know you can get nice balls like that even bigger <laughs> if you want pop them in and just poach them for about 20 minutes you know it it'll become firm take them out and you can serve them straight away or you can let them chill down you can slice them <laughs> and then pan fry them as well. OK, Mark, how's your knurdle? OK, they're absolutely fantastic. Just remember, there's a tip for you now. Remember, take the cocktail sticks out before you serve it. <laughs> and we just thicken that sauce slightly, a little bit of parsley in your knurdle, and look at that. Yum. Bring it on over. That looks really good. OK, what is on the menu for Monday? Right, next week we're kicking off Taiwanese week, so we're going to have guest chefs and dishes from all around the country.